Peace, 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 peace. I'm Rami Salam El. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us. We have an interesting development in the Rise of the Moors Wakefield standoff case. And in particular, it has to do with Quinn Cumberlander. Uh, and we're going to get to the video footage so you can see for yourself. Uh, but before we do, I just wanted to give an update in regards to um, some court matters that's tied into uh, Quinn. And on the 28th of July, there was general correspondence that was mailed to Quinn in regards uh, in regards to his hearing that's coming up on the 18th of August at 1030 a.m. Um, and then we have an update. Uh, that the pro se defendant submitted a writ of error on the 1st of August. And then also on the 12th of August, um, that the clerk's office, the, uh, the notice, the correspondence that they sent to Quinn was returned to the clerk's office stating return to sender vacant, unable to forward. Um, and, uh, so yeah, so they mailed out some correspondence to, to Quinn um, sent it to his, uh, his mailing address. It was returned to the clerk's office saying that it was, uh, the, the sender was vacant and that they were unable to forward the correspondence to any other address. Um, so I don't know what's going to become of the hearing on the 18th. We'll have to wait and see for that. But the more pressing issue, the more, uh, breaking news, if you will, is the video footage that I'm about to show you in which Quinn makes some, I don't even want to speak for it. I would like for you to see for yourself. Um, and honestly, I, I would like to reserve my opinions and comments on the video. And rather than me speak on it, I would like to hear what it is that the viewers think. Um, you know, if there are any Rise of the Moor militia group members, it'd be interesting to hear what they think. Um, yeah, I don't want to say too much more. The one thing I will say to the people watching this, if you if you aren't familiar with what's going on and you're just trying to get an understanding of who are these Moors people or Moors, I just want to again emphasize that the Moor Science Temple of America, uh, Noble Drew Ali and the teachings that he brought, um, people who identify themselves as true Moorish Americans, um, those individuals, that group is completely separate from uh, groups like the Rise of the Moors uh, militia group or um, individuals like the, the person he's speaking to, Lamont. I did a video on that. I'll put the link in the description. Any of these other groups, these other Moors groups that you may see speaking on the right to travel, um, you know, how certain government bodies don't have jurisdiction. Um, uh, speaking about claiming houses as uh, and not having to pay any taxes, uh, uh, driving without a license, owning uh, guns, basically just uh, things that would get classified as quote unquote sovereign citizen uh, movements or activities. Please understand that those individuals and their ideology is completely separate from what Noble Jar Lee taught, what the Moore Science Temple of America represents and is about and what true Moorish Americans are about. Um, I don't want to get too much more into it, uh, but now let's get to the footage. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, yeah, and I'll update you as more news and the case develops. Peace. So um, without further ado, Brother Quinn, you there? Islam. Islam, brother. You want to, uh, how you want to do this? Mm -hmm. Islam, you got, all, to, to you got the camera brothers. on? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Able to see me? One second. Let me. Uh... All right. Islam. Islam. So, uh, Islam to all the brothers and sisters on the call and that's at the, uh, the meeting. Peace and blessings to you. I, uh, I want to start off by saying uh, exactly what Lamont stated. Uh, that's in the uh, the one hundred ones. This is this is going to have to be something that you experience that's not told in words. And uh, the words that uh, that I'm that I'm attempting to, to use this evening are coming straight from my heart and the truth. Uh, and it's and it is the truth. Um, 
from the beginning, like Lamont stated, uh, around 2018, that's when I started this, uh, my, my, you know, my, uh, my walk into, to, to, uh, knowing who I, I'm truly am. And this was, it was so beautiful because I always knew on the inside that's who I was. And, um, that's what I was, but I just didn't know. I never knew. Um, so after doing my first book was the, uh, Black's Law fourth edition greenback. That was the first book I purchased. And, um, from there, I, I went so hard, I, I just started studying and studying and studying. And uh, the first thing that I came across was uh, the Constitution. And I actually uh, heard Jamal on a, uh, on, a, on a video he was doing. And it was the first time I ever seen a more. First time I ever seen a face, first time everything. So I immediately uh, locked in. Now to fast forward to the event of July 2nd, uh, hours before the morning of this nightmare and family. When I say nightmare, I truly mean it was a nightmare. Um, <sighs> so uh, this is speeded up. Uh, there were, I was part of a militia there and uh, we was just a, a group of men who came together, who studied and, and wanted to um, protect the interests of our, our women and children. And in Rhode Island was, was the location where Jamal Abdul, um, Jamal Talib Abdullah Bay uh, was domiciling that. So we started off there and we met up there. And through a course of a year of my transition to Rhode Island, and I'll give you a brief scenario of that. I um, <laughs> previously, as the authorized representative of my straw, uh, Quinn Cumberlander and Nam de Geer uh, operated commercial vehicles for, for 20 cycles. And um, when I found out about this now, this is like Lamar stated, I was like, man, I'm, 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 I'm compensating and contracting my energy for 18 hours a day. And at the end of the day, I have nothing to show for it. So when it, when it all finally hit me, uh, there was a, uh, in a in a business that I just sacrificed everything and gave up, I turned in a tractor trailer, making four to five thousand notes a week, and I gave up everything. I sacrificed everything and went straight to Rhode Island to to build a community for for our people and uh, to 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 have a Chinatown, an example of a Chinatown in every single state have a Morristown, so that was the goal. I even sent a uh, fiat there, sent 3,000 notes prior to me going up there to secure land with the other Moors. The goal was to uh, purchase some land or, 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 or at least start the process of putting, uh, trying to get a mortgage and then claim it later. So that, that idea sounded good. So we can get in there and start tilling the ground and farming and, and uh, the goal was to sell the produces back to the to the community at the bodegas and stuff like that up in New York and, and around the surrounding areas. So the, the plan was to build a Morristown. So as this proceeded throughout that year, um, training was coming up and uh, it was an invitation for all the Moors throughout around the country to come and we was gonna go training on this land where up in Maine where they previously trained before. I wasn't part of it at that point in time. Uh, to, uh, to speed things up and not to take too much of you guys' time. Uh, so that night at, at 10.45 p.m., uh, there was a meeting held that was held by all the Moors that was present, all the gentlemen, all the men that was, that was um, kidnapped with me that night, that morning on the, on the, uh, the highway. <sighs> at 10.45, there was a meeting held by Jamal to leave Abdullah Bay, where at this meeting, he was the only one speaking. And the purpose of this meeting was to debrief or brief uh, what we're gonna do to, towards our transition of our travels towards Maine. And uh, the beginning of that, <laughs> that, that meeting, we was gonna go all uh, um, full gear. Like, full gear? What is it's 40 pounds right here, you know, the, the vest, you have your, your magazines, uh, 
all of your tactical gear is on at this point. So this is full four gear. You trained in this uh, in the neighborhood uh, in Rhode Island. There were scenarios where the Moors. I wasn't part of this. Uh, this 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 uh, the two scenarios where they trained in Rhode Island, where I was I was uh, contracting my energy out for for compensation at the time. There um, contracting as a commercial truck driver. They will we will walk the street and we train. We, we run in the mornings, full gear, uh, run, train, workout. This was something that was routine for two months before July, July the uh, July third or July fourth weekend of the training. So um, this was. There were times where they called the, the 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 police department in Rhode Island, Incorporated, and said that uh, where the Moors were going to go be out in the neighborhood. Uh, if you get any strange calls from residents, uh, I just want you to know it's us and don't be alarmed. Hey, no problem. Go ahead, have fun. Four times that 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 those uh, training regiments took place. So, uh, uh, from my standpoint and what I know about that, I can sit here right now and say every last one of those ten other men. Um, the 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 mindset of a, a, a standoff was never. The intent to even try to hurt someone was never, it was never the the, the focal point at all. So, uh, so like I stated in the beginning of this meeting, it was stated to uh, we're we're going full gear. That's wow, about five hour ride. Like, what, what are we talking about? So, so this was part of the training. To uh, part of the training, to my understanding, once we got to Maine on a private land, we were we were going to dig holes more more hope. More hole digging than anything. Uh, training drills, firemen carry, carry, carry another man on your back. Uh, uh, the, the, the demonstration of uh, dragging uh, an injured or wounded uh, member of your squad by the, by the back, you know, uh, dead man drag, I believe it might be referred to. So these were the, some of the things that we all knew that we were going to do once we got to land. And of course, our target practices, there are a couple of the arms that we had. None of them have ever been fired. Uh, this was an opportunity to BZO the uh, the sites on them. Um, so at, at, so around 10, 10 p.m., it was like I had just um, gotten to the location where uh, from from me um, compensating my energy for that day at a job. And once I got there, um, the other Moors from New York were there. And so we was all ready to go within like maybe about two hours we was heading out. So, I, hey, I'm too tired. I'm not able to do anything i'm just going to be in there so 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 that i, I noticed at that point it was kind of because i was supposed to be one of the uh gentlemen uh as a as a as a, um traveling operating the, the uh, automobile as a traveler but i stated that i was too tired to do so so that at that moment it was uh it was like a little okay then well then then, then you do it you 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 be the one who who, who operate the vehicle uh motor vehicle Excuse me, automobile objection, automobile. So, so, um, oh, so this is me. So, so here we go. Here we go. All right, you got the bases covered. All right. So at ten forty-five, this meeting starts, and it was it was told that we was going to go in all gear. So everybody's like, "Oh, we're going." All right. Okay. Cool. You know that makes sense. You know, forty extra pounds just sitting there is, is, is part of training. That, that's what they do. That's what we need to do. It works. So. Another scenario comes up in this, this, this meeting where in the event of us getting pulled over of any form, shape, what have you, we're going to do this. And what that was, was uh, I'll be the, uh, as Jamal Tlaib Adula Bay stated, he, like I said, he's the only one communicating at this time. He stated that he was gonna be the first one to exit the motor, the, auto, the, uh, the automobile, to 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 engage whoever it is, either a policy enforcer or or someone who we, we, that was the that was the plan to exit the vehicle, the, the automobiles, and to position ourselves to a point where we're setting up a perimeter around these automobiles. Uh, you stand here, you stand here, you two stand here at the back, uh, you two and these. Uh, so we traveled in two conveyances, as as everyone knows. I was in the the the, uh, the second commands, and and um, so 
Full Moors was going to be in the uh, the first the first advance, and the rest were going to be in the the second. And I don't know so much about seating arrangements, but yeah, uh, the seating arrangements was uh, important to who's exiting the automobiles at what point in time. So those those seating arrangements were were actually uh, planned out to the point where because you come you exit at this point in time, then you and the purpose of this whole conversation as as it took place was to in the event of something going on we're going to show that we're a militia that's traveling on the roads and and to my and to my comprehension at this point we were going off of the the young versus hawaii hawaii versus young uh case where uh, a well-regulated militia has the right to travel um uh, without tags or anything of that sort, just like you would see a convoy of uh, the de facto military traveling on on the roads, where they don't they're they're fully armed and there 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 are no tags on their advances, and um, that's 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 the that's that's the in the, as the Second Amendment go, that's the, the right to bear arms and for a well regulated militia to to. Um, have the authority to do that. Not so much the authority to do so, but uh, for a world, uh, as far as the Second Amendment go. We went you. So, do, throughout this meeting, after after we we addressed it, after he addressed the issue of, just in case we get stop, you do this. You saying I'm like I'm like, and and the way that I am is you know. What you think about, you bring about the law of attraction. Uh, what you put out there, you know, we're, we're gods. We're creating our existence as we speak. I, I, I have timed it down to almost down to two weeks within three months of me thinking about something that actually manifests. So the 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 the, the quickest that I actually put intentions out there, things uh, coming to fruition has been exactly uh, two weeks. And I'm like, wow. I'm, I'm trying to get like you know become an alchemist, get like even better with that. So I'm like, man, why the hell are we putting all this damn energy into getting pulled over? So, the, so the, 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 the plan was to leave at 12 a.m. so that we can we travel one of the, not the light of the sun, at night. And, and, and it's a 4th of July weekend. So we are, I, I communicated that, well, we all knew that there were going to be a lot of policy and forces on the road. And the last thing that we would want to do was to stop at a, a um, gas station and fuel up. So there were extra cans in the back. I don't I don't know why at this point uh the 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 commands that I was in was completely full. Uh this 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 jumping off the um this jumping over the, the meeting that actually occurred at this point. But the van that I was the commands that I was in was completely full and the commands that Jamal and three other Moors were in it, it, it had at least a half a tank. I mean not a half, not a half a tank but a quarter tank of, of gas in it. So I don't know why at this point uh, that 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 command was not gassed up, and we had the full gas tanks in the back or whatever. I wasn't in that one, so I had no idea. Um, I wish I would have known. I wish I would have known. Hindsight, right? So throughout this meeting, getting back to the meeting and throughout the meeting, as Jamal to leave Abdullah Bay states, who is going to exit the vehicles when and at what time in the event of us getting pulled over. Like, why are we putting all this emphasis on? All right, so uh, all right, so so just in case the worst scenario happens, we still need to be aware of the situation and what to do. Now, uh, to, to, to this understanding, what should have been talked about at that point, what should have been like um, how we will uh, prove foreign citizenship and protection. That that never came up that one time. And, 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 uh, and this is the uh, the thing that I, I, I I, I, I wanted to state this, that proven foreign citizenship and protection was not part of this travel to Maine, which would have been alarming to everybody if we known that not proving our foreign citizenship and protection would have been the theme of this, this, this event. Uh, the, the, um, the statement of to, for us to leave all our cell phones, all of our ID, identification cards, nationality cards, wallets, leave everything here, uh, just in case. Just in case, what, 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 I like that. So, so there were 
these moors that went from New York and the other moors, I'll say that we were more so competent to the point where 80% of the moors bought their nationality cards. 80% of the moors actually bought their things with them because these are the, uh, the items that I've seen in the discoveries. The, the, um, the de facto administrative orders that, that the, uh, the, the uh, Commonwealth put out for the discovery stated, I've seen the nationality cards of the other Moors. I'm like, all right, so they did, they did bring them. Um, so the fact that we were, we, were, we were told not to bring cell phones, not to bring identification cards with us, we, we, that would have put us in the mind, that put us in the mind frame that at this point in time, Jamal was gonna be the commander in chief and he was going to be the one who uh, spoke proven, 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 proven foreign citizenship and, and, and protection for, for, for all of us. Interjection, interjection. Yes. So pretty much Jamal was supposed to act as the commander, the one that speaks on behalf of the uh, convoy. Correct. Right. So he was supposed to be a competent authority that was going to prove that you all were under consular jurisdiction, being as though you all come under a separate flag. That is a right. treaty negotiation with the United States. Right? The, fa the fact that we're even out there enforcing the Constitution, our Second Amendment right to do so, the fact that we were out there doing that, um, <laughs> definitely not the intended. Speak up, Correct. Basically. Correct. Nah, all right, you continue, bro. Uh, hey, look, and throughout the story, don't nah, worry. Yeah, keep I, it I, up, I keep it up, nah, keep it up, yeah. Yeah, yeah I got you, up. I got you, man. I, Family, I haven't spoken on this, and honestly, to be real with y'all, I haven't, only because of Lamont, and like you said, uh, the vetting process, you said, even Quinn, uh, it was, it was, a, it was a, on July, actually on July 3rd, we talked, and it was, a, uh, he, he, his spirit is real, Lamont's spirit is real as well, and um, I, I'll state that I wasn't ready to, to, to speak to speak on this information because uh like I haven't really it was it was it was a it was a it was a freaking nightmare family it was a nightmare on that morning from 1 a.m to 11 a.m it was a freaking nightmare and then the actual the actual Desmond Crips started right after that. I, I just I just knew like that weekend I was I was coming oh this is a misunderstanding we didn't do anything wrong we didn't hurt nobody uh, no, nah, so so there was something else at play there. Something else at play. Uh, I, I'll I'll finish up with the meeting. And I'll try to help you. So 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 he, uh, there were so the placing the positioning of each more that was solidified by each person, and we we all agreed on it to the point where we we're going to demonstrate to the policy enforcers that hey, we're not just out here doing some nigger shit. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're we're actually moors, and and we're 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 a, a lawful well-regulated militia and 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 we're we're going training you know it shouldn't be a problem you know it shouldn't be a problem it's not a problem with the other militias that we took notice in detroit that we you know i actually looked up and like wow so this is happening around the country so i something that's good is de facto uh, uh um corporation this is what's going on, on on our land so so i was like all right so i was i was 100 percent with going through the training and showing the other moors how to actually um, train to do things, discipline and do it right. Uh, to to be upright men instead of not out here drug dealing and gang banging and and that was the idea to go back and take this knowledge, YouTube it, it record it, take this knowledge back to the to the to the to the to the to the to the, uh, the neighborhoods, you know, so to the youth, so we can we can you know, yeah yeah yeah, comprehend what I'm saying. So, you, bro. so throughout this meeting. Okay, after that part, we everybody solidified there. And it was, okay, so the meeting was only 15 minutes of them, 10.45 to 11. And then out from 11 to 12, that was some downtime. We're leaving at 12 o'clock a.m., no questions asked. If you ain't ready, you're getting left behind type deal. And um, so, all right, boom, stamp, copy. So, so, throughout, so, so, throughout, so this is probably like eight minutes into the meeting now. So everybody knows their, their, their through the briefing, everybody knows their positioning of, where they're going to actually stand in an event of us getting pulled over or or something happening where we're approached by vehicles from the back. Uh, I don't I don't I don't really comprehend like that part. Like, oh, somebody gonna try to rob us? Like, like what is really going so, on? So so, so 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 pretty much, 
he instructed you all to stand around the vehicles or, or the automobiles in an event that you all got pulled over. He was to get out first. Everybody else was to follow suit and stand in a specific position as if you all were preparing for a standoff. Goddamn shootout. Excuse me. Yes. 10-4. All right. So what so, happened so, when you all took, took the convoy or, or got on the road? Uh, right before that, right before that, I'm gonna oh, go finish I'm up with the meeting. No, no, you can't, but I'm gonna finish up with the meeting real quick. And uh, so it was like er everybody after the briefing, a quick little 15 minutes. Everybody good? What are we gonna do? Get it up. All right, got everything bags packed. It's like all right. So he said. So this was the question, like right at the end, like the last minute of this briefing. Everybody good? It was like y'all scared? This is coming from Jamal Talib Abdul Bay. It was a silence, and it was like y'all scared. And so I looked around the room and everybody because I don't really want to be with janitors. I don't want to wake up in this fight with janitors or, or cooks. So I looked around the room like, because it's like this is the day that we actually going out here and I've been on everybody ass is about, it's, it's up to us. It's, it's literally going to be up to us to make this happen for our people. So so, um, so I'm looking around the room and I'm, and I'm, I'm soul searching like, who, who's the flake? <laughs> so, so I'm still looking for the plate. Like, who's the one who I already know Judas in here? This is my concept. I know, I'm letting everybody know, like, yo, we know what this movement is about. If they ain't in here, they they here. So, so, so it's like, so I looked around and I'm scanning to see if I can see any chink in anybody's arm. He said, so who's scared? So anybody? So y'all scared? So y'all scared? Look around. So he said, uh, you. So he points out each more. Tell me, tell me how you tell me what's going on, what you're thinking about. So he goes around the whole room. And I'm the last one to go. He goes around the whole room. Everybody give their, their statement about how they feel about what we're about to do and, and how we're going to get to the land and we're going to train and all this. And is everybody clear on what we're going to do in the event of us getting pulled over. So like, yeah, I, that's right. I got five hours. That's, you know, we good. So everybody say their piece and how they feel. And uh, when it got to me, um, the responses of all the other Moors were were kind of, hey man, you know, you know, it, you know, uncertainty. Uncertainty was was high on the list. Um, um, we're militia, so we we comprehend why being in gear would be important for training. All right, so that wasn't really well, why we got to put on gear. That never actually came up uh, to be um, to be full gear. Uh, to the point where, like, hey man, I'm relaxing. I'm, you know, <laughs> you know. So, so it's like, why would we do so? That never actually came up because we, uh, everybody, we, we ever had the bags, sleeping bags, got your fatigues on. This is what we're gonna be out there in the woods in. And as soon as we get there, we setting up camp, we setting up the tents, and we going straight to training, like straight at it. So he goes around the whole room. How y'all feel about this? And uh, when it get to me, uh, um, I, I, I tried to break the ice because the tension was really high. It, it was, it was thick. And it was like, it was, it was, you could smell it. You actually could smell it. You could smell the bullshit. And, and um, but then nobody really know how to, it's like, it's like, a, it, was, it was silent, war, it was, it was, it was a silent weapons. Excuse me, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> silent, what was it? Uh, silent, silent wars. Of, I, I oh, silent weapons for quiet wars. Silent, yeah, silent weapons of quiet wars. I don't even know why I couldn't come up with it. Amazing books, Behold the Pale Horse. Um, it, so you can smell it, because you can smell like, all right, so, so this is what I stated because I, I, I felt the tension. And so I stated this, and I apologize to all the emphasis on the phone and the sisters on the call and that's there. Uh, but I'm gonna, this is everything that I'm stating is the truth. And that's all I got is the truth. And so when it got to me, I stated, um, and it's like, all right, what you think? What you think, more? I said, man, if we even get to the land. Wait, 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 wait. Don't say that it. Okay. That's not, that's not necessary. Okay. Okay, yeah. so if I said, even if we can get there, I'll be excited enough if we get there that I'll enjoy the land a whole lot. So, so I was like, if we just get there, that'd be good enough for me. So it was a, it was so much, it was, it was like 10 minutes focused on, 13 minutes focused on what we're gonna do when we get pulled over by policy enforcement. It was, it was, it was 100% of this focus on that, on this, that one thing. Um, so when, now, now we 12 o'clock come, Pull straight out. At 110 in the morning, we were well around, I'll say about one, well, 
I, I stayed, I seen it like on the uh, the troopers, the, the time said 110 when the, the scenario and the incident was going on on the side of the road. So that's where it's, it's, it's a light drizzle coming down. It's, it's, it's uh, J- July 3rd, uh, 12 o'clock in the morning. We're going 1230, one o'clock comes, it's, it's pouring down. We're, we're like an hour from Boston, at, at Boston and, and, and corporate. So, so we're like an hour from there and I'm, I'm noticing that the, the, the operator of the first commands is, you know, everybody's kind of tired at this point. So he's like, so I'm like, Hey man, you know, like call him on the phone, tell him, look, you know, we ain't got time for this. We don't need him swerving on the road and, and something happening. And, you know, cause, cause you know, um, I've been, uh, operating through the straw, through the Nam de gear, a uh, professional truck driver for the last 20 years. I'm like, well, we ain't got time for this. Let's get this, call him, tell him to wake, it, wake his ass up. So they, they make the call, wake up. So so around one o'clock comes, we're, we're 105. We're actually, we're, we're traveling, we're traveling. And we go, we go past this exit. I believe it's exit 54. And it was a, it was a policy enforcer sitting there in his, in his, uh, is this his, his, his uh, cruiser, his trooper cruiser, sitting there on the side of the highway with his, uh, not emergency flashes, well, not, not emergency flash, but his caution flash, flash lights, caution lights, and they were direction of arrow direction. So from the middle, uh, both going out to, to the uh, arrows, going out to, to the passenger side and to the driver's side, of both on the back of his, of his, uh, his window. So he cl- clearly can see, everybody can see that's, that's traveling on this roadway, there's a trooper sitting there with his caution lights on. Uh, um, and and because it's drizzling in this rain and it's the 4th of July and we all, everybody know their presence is gonna be um, increased at this point. Uh, we, we go past this trooper, it's, it's, it's on a downgrade. The, he's sitting here and we coming past him, we traveling past him. And now we're going down a decline where it goes down in, in, a, in a, uh, a terrain where then it comes back up at the next exit. So at the bottom of this terrain is 0.5 miles. The half, you know, because each exit away from, each exit is a mile apart. Each exit is a mile apart. So you can see the next exit at the top of the hill. We didn't even get to the middle. We didn't even go 0.5 miles, not even half a mile away from this trooper. I say we traveled 0.4 miles. The first conveyance slammed on brakes, uh, attempting to get off the road immediately. We're in the right-hand traveling lane next to the emergency lane. So, you know, because, you know, stay in the right-hand lane, you know, we go on like, want to do that thing, they do it. <laughs> Once we go past this trooper at 0.4 miles, the first conveyance uh, immediately gets off the road with no turn signal, no warnings, no nothing. Uh, immediately, I think that there's a flat tire. You know, I, I see this so much on the roadway. So I'm thinking it's a flat tire. And, and I'm like, all right, so I'm, I'm getting prepared for a flat tire in my mind. The conveyance that I was in almost uh, hit the back of that conveyance because they stopped all, uh, uh, um, immediately. It was an immediate stop to the point where we almost ran into the back of them, meaning we didn't know why we was pulling over. Um, once, once they, we, we, we attempt to get off the road by the, 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 the operator of that, that, that conveyance, he, he's, so he hitting the brakes, we kind of sliding into the back of them, because keep in mind, we're going downhill. So we are, we're sliding at this point, about to hit the back of them. And I'm like, I'm about to tell him to go around, just, just, just go around them. But then the first conveyance pulled up to the point where we, we, we have more space to pull over. So once we were stationed on the side of the, the road in the emergency breakdown lane, uh, so I'm about to get on the phone, uh, uh, the, walkie, the walkie-talkie, hey, is, what's, what's going on? You know, is there, was, before I can do any of that, there's an a, 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 a automobile approaching from the rear. No, I don't see lights. I don't see any. There's no headlights. There are nothing. So he turns off his headlights. He just has on his caution lights. So we can't see anything. So I'm, I'm like, hey, hey, there's a vehicle approaching the vehicle. Uh, uh, you know, 
advance as an automobile approaching a rear. So at this point, I don't even know if the, the communication was sent through or well, who heard it. Uh, but immediately, Jamal Talib Abdullah Bay, I see him walking from the, oh, this bush. I, I, guys, it was a nightmare. Now go ahead, bro, go ahead. I'm just giving them visuals Jeez. while you talk. Go ahead, don't get thrown off. Jeez. All right, so where that, where that, where that first conveyance is actually yet, it, we had backed it up too, too, so that we can get things, you know, so we was, you know, we was camping out at this point. They had the shit bucket right there in the middle, excuse me, <laughs> you know, the, you know, that's what the camping bucket was for. So that, the first commands was actually maybe about 40 yards further up the road. It was 40 yards further up uh, the way that it was standing that, that when that incident had took place. Now, uh, once we pulled on, that's where the, 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 um, the, that, that let the black vehicle, that's where it stayed at the commands, the automobile. That's where it, when we came to a complete stop, it's right there. You see 0.4 miles, not even half a mile later. So he, this, this trooper cruiser pulls up. And before I can say anything, I see, I see Jamal walking towards my, my, you know, to, I'm in the passenger front seat. I see him walking towards, so I'm like, all right, so there is someone behind us that's got out. So he, as he gets to the passenger window of where I'm at, I see him extend his hand out to the, uh, at this point now I can identify that it was a trooper, a policy enforcer. Um, so as he extends his hand, the trooper, the policy enforcer does not shake his hand. And you see now the, the order, the order of who's supposed to exit the vehicles at what time, all of that took place within a matter of, as we debriefed it, a, a matter of maybe 10, 15 seconds. Everybody, we, we, we got to our, our uh, positions, uh, perimeter around the vehicle. To, to my understanding, it was to demonstrate that we were a militia. So interjection, Quinn. Yes, yes. So to sum it up, uh, what you just said, you all were traveling. Y'all noticed the uh, state trooper uh, cruiser on the right side of the road with the yellow hazard caution. lights on, uh, the caution lights that were going from the middle or uh, uh, on out uh, from left to right. And then you went past him. Y'all went past him and then went point, how many? Four, point four miles. Point four, four miles rock. and then pulled over. Where Abruptly in the truck. Abruptly in front of you all, slammed on brakes as if they had a flat tire, which that's what it appeared in your mm -hmm. eyes, and then which made you all slam on brakes, pull over to the side, and then the policy enforcer pulled up behind you all, right? With no emergency lights on, no no headlight, no nothing. I can't see right. anything. Well, we can see, we can tell right here in the video. The zoom is not showing us. I just see a picture of the trooper in the-, the Oh, the no, so you all can't even see what we're seeing. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, wait a minute. All right, what do you see now, Quinn? Uh, me. <laughs> Quinn? Okay, see you. All right, mm -hmm. screen share. What about now? Can you see it now? Okay. Yeah, I see, okay. You all oh, this the troopers. Uh yep. So <sighs> this is um you all had already pulled over and he just basically pulled up 0.4 miles behind y'all from behind y'all. Right. So y'all weren't pulled over. No, we were never pulled over. He never had on his emergency lights. It's supposed to have been okay. a caretaking situation. So Which that cancels was, that narrative that they were poor. They over. saw us because we was out on the highway with arms. This guy's not even in park yet. He still got his foot on the brake, not even in park. He didn't have time to put it in park. It was like once we once he came to that that conveyance right there, we see come to a complete stop. Family, I say 45 seconds later, this is this this when this like that, we couldn't even that's react. It was pulled, no reaction. That's when the policy they might be using up. cameras to control those highways with cameras. No, that sounds like a plan. No, nah, that wasn't. Nah, that's, his, that's, that's his trooper video. Yeah, this yeah, this was the setup. That's this, no thing. Sister, just, just keep paying attention, sister. Um, 
But yeah, basically, Quinn is saying, as soon as they pull hit the brakes, that's the the truck in front of them. That's the truck that Quinn's uh in right here. Passion they slamming on brakes as the policy enforcer pulls up, gets out, and then walks up to the vehicle. Like they stop there. So as soon no, no. as they roll uh, in, past, interjection, interjection. Okay. As soon as we roll, we travel past, uh, <laughs> uh, traveling at 60 miles an hour, going 0.4 miles, I'm talking about like it takes, if you go 60 miles an hour, you, you'll get there uh, one mile in a minute. So it, it, this is, so that would have been like not even 30 seconds, family. That wouldn't have been 30 seconds of passing the state, this, this, this policy enforcer before we pull. So, so we, we now on the side of the road and, and what I'm stating is, uh, uh, 30 seconds of not even passing this, traveling past this policy enforcer, uh, the operator of this, of this automobile never put it in park because within, uh, 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 let me see, I'll say within 20 seconds or within, within a minute for sure, but I'll say about 40 seconds, within a 40 seconds or less, this is what, this is what occurred. And I can see at this before, I even noticed anybody was walking up or, or even a flashlight. I see how far that the other one is, uh, other advances ahead. So I see Jamal get out. And I'm like, what the fuck are you getting out for and walking back here? Like, he's going to tell me something or then, then I see the, uh, so the other more you see there, he was in the first advance as well. So and, see, they immediate interjection. You see it, they immediately got out with arms in hand Right, but that wasn't the plan, so. and that that well, that was the plan that we didn't know about. Oh. That Quinn just broke down. That they were planning to do before they left. They said, if we get pulled over, right, Quinn? Correct. If we get pulled over, this is how the orders is going to be when we get out. You, um, I'm going to get out first, Jamal, right. with him, and then y'all two get out. Stand there, y'all two get out, stand there. And guess what? They're fully armed. But they never got pulled over. Y'all following the narrative? Yeah. Okay. You ready, Quinn? I'm ready. Go ahead, you got it. Hey, Quinn, listen. We, hey, look. I'm glad you're doing this because my son ain't going to have None of my sons ain't going to have to go through this. And None of you all because well. like, we speaking on it. And we That's actually right. got somebody that actually made it out of it that can actually talk. Mm -hmm. Because how many of us heard about people doing processes or whatever and then going to prison and we never hear from them? We only hear from the people that talks about them. Oh, yeah, it's Taj. It's Taj that made them go to prison, right? When actuality, it's the people that's coercing these people or scamming these people into these processes. This is a part of the process. It's a setup. It's called a false it's, flag it's, operation. Yeah. Islam. Uh, interject, interjection, interject, brother. Interjection. Family. Interjection. Family. Interjection. 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 Yes. I just wanted to say this. He's lucky to be alive because you already know how they want to shoot at people right. and then right. and then shoot first and then ask questions later so not only do we get to see him and talk to him he's alive and well exactly and clearly you can see that 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 was um jamal's intention because he pulled over in front of the officer to do this particular demonstration that's what we're getting that's what y'all i can tell y'all trying to exactly. get exactly you're absolutely right thank you yeah. Now, he wasn't the operator of that automobile. Another Moore was from the Bronx. Yeah. When I seen the Moore. I said, bro, what made you pull over? So why you pull over? He said, I looked down at the gas and I saw we was about to run out of gas. So I slammed on the brakes and pulled over. I'm about, I want to reach through the, we was in the holding tanks downstairs. And I'm like, before, while we had this de facto venue a week later, and I'm like, bro, what made you pull over? And like, uh, I saw the gas, so it got low, and 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 so I pulled over. I'm like, I'm like, what? So, so like, I'm you know, with my skill level of the experience that I have, when you're going down a terrain, family, the 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 floating, and I'm a I'm a uh, um, 
I'm a diesel mechanic as well. Mm. When you're going down the terrain, the floating, your floater and your fuel tanks or, or, or gas tanks and any kind of automobile, uh, it, it will show that you have more fuel than you was, I'm thinking trucks, but it will show that you have more gas than you actually will actually have when you're going downhill. As you go uphill, it, 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 your, your, your gauge gets lower. So as we was going down this terrain, if anything, it should have showed that we had legitimately more than a quarter, like more than what we actually had when we left. Because that was only an hour of travel on a highway, no stop and go. So it was nowhere. So so early in that morning, like that picture that like like well, when the daylight came up, I actually because once that the first conveyance backed up, I actually walked up to it. You know, we was like getting stuff out, getting food out. You know, it was raining, so you know, um, I walked up to the. You no, know, turn the key on. You know the the, the electrical part. You know to, to see the the gauges. Still got it. Still got a quarter tank. Still got a quarter tank gas. I'm like, yo, you telling me we couldn't go two miles down the road? It didn't stop. Like, if we would have got to the next exit and stop, that would have been like perfect. But we pull over right. I'm like, yo, you saw him on the side of the road, right? Like, because we all saw him. <sighs> oh, so the, so so even at this point, still, uh, we're literally all thinking that you know they're just gonna let us go and we're going about our way. Uh, I, so I hear them. Yes. Look real, real quick. Um, the first time the policy enforcer walked up, uh, Casey walked up to Jamal and another guy. The other guy was in ready position with both hands on his rifle. Let me show you all. Oh, oh yeah. Look at him. Look at him behind. Behind Jamal. He got both hands on his rifle. But when you fast forward it to when the policy enforcer Casey Jones, I think Casey Jones walked back up. Now look at the additional brothers that's behind Jamal. No rifle. And he looks incompetent. He looks like he doesn't belong there. Look at him. Is it 10 minutes? It's 10 o'clock now? Oh, five minutes. Okay. All right, we got five minutes, Quinn. So look. All right. Um, just wanted to point that out, but real quick. So let's get to the part where you all got United States. Uh, well, that everything else on the video can speak for itself. Everybody, you all can go to that video. Um, it's on the YouTube channel, Enforce the Constitution. That's the YouTube channel. The whole entire um, camera footage from Casey, the original person that pulled up behind them, is on the YouTube, on our YouTube channel. And um, you can actually even hear somewhere in the YouTube video where Jamal is yelling out my telephone number to the uh, lieutenant who was the, supposed to be the negotiator saying that his consul general is on the phone trying to reach them. And I actually had them on the other phone. So it's not a mystery that I was a part of that conversation and I heard everything. So, um, but now Quinn, talk about up to the, uh, to, uh, from the point where, cause we only got uh, less yes, than sir. five minutes. Yes, sir. Talk about uh, the point where you were uh, 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 in the uh, car, and what happened to those two individuals? And, and versus oh, everybody. Oh, okay. Else. okay, so 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 daylight hit at five a.m. Uh, uh, um, that's when they turned their bright lights off because they was blinding us the whole time. So as soon as daylight break, they, the lights became ineffective, so they turned them off. As soon as that happened, maybe about ten minutes later, up until five o'clock, uh, an eagle came over the highway, screeching like let out a, a loud screech, and everybody stopped and looked up and was like, it was a huge eagle, circled right above us, uh, both 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 sides of the highway, and uh, everybody looked up, and I was like, wow, that's like we looked up, was like that's our lie, you know, we're gonna be all right. So 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 prior to that happening, um, me me uh, where they brought in stop force teams from uh, 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 Massachusetts. Incorporated in and in, 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 uh, New Hampshire, uh, I say maybe about an hour or two into this ordeal, maybe about two hours into the ordeal, I went to the back of the uh, the conveyance and pulled out the national owl flag, and and I and I stood there with another more 
and we held that flag. I personally held it, I think, for a total of three hours, uh, anywhere from two to three hours in the freezing rain. I held the flag, uh, showing that we we're 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 here in peace. You know, we're we're not here trying to you know do anything to you. No intentions of that. So uh, after all this going in, a negotiator come in, and I'm like. I'm like, bro, you have, have you talked to Lamont? Like, like, what's going on? Like, 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 because I'm like, he like, yeah. And so, and then like early in the morning, like seven to eight, uh, Jamal's phone was on the charger in, in the in the, in the cabins, and someone got word to me, Lamont is calling. So I gave him the phone, and you know, like like Lamont said, they had that conversation. I wasn't a part of it because he kept walking away from me as I'm trying to hear, you know, what the hell is going on. Uh, so. <sighs> Um, so we get, put our get arms, the, yeah, we get, put our get, arms down, we put our arms down and, and then they, you know, they, 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 they kidnapped us. And once they kidnapped us, all the other Moors were, they were calling cars up from the rear. All the other Moors was put in individual cars, one by one. Two Moors were taken away in ambulances. That was Jamal Talib Abdullah Bay and, and Jamil, um, Jamil Bay. Those two, they cut their clothes off and put them in gurneys, put them in stretchers, took them away in an ambulance. So what I hear, once I'm inside of the, uh, the, the cruiser that they placed me in, I hear over the, uh, the radio states that the two agents on the scene are okay. So now, now there were over, I would say anywhere from 80 to 150 uh, policy enforcers out here at this time that I can count. And, and, and it's like a, a, anywhere from 80 to 150 rifles like pointing at us. And, and, and what I hear once they, they kidnapped us and placed us in these, these separate uh, conveyances, I hear over the, over the radio of the, because the, the trooper of the, the transporter of the conveyance I was in, he was outside high five and they all, oh, yeah, you know, pulling the drop shots and all of this. And I hear over the, the radio, the two agents on the scene are okay. Now, was there anything wrong with them physically as to why they had to be transported in ambulances? No, he actually told Jamal Talib Abdullah Bay, stated to the trooper that yeah, I, he stated this to the to the to the negotiator that you're gonna have to drag me away from my from my men. I'm not you're gonna have to drag me away. <clears throat> this is what he stated. And then so once we put our arms down and placed them back into the conveyance. Wow. And and we they ordered us to walk backwards towards them. He became to the point where all of a sudden that he was too faint to do anything, too weak to he couldn't stand. Uh, so I in another more I threw his arm around me and we walked toward. There was the, the position where they stopped us and then they ordered us to lay down on the ground. Oh, oh this. <sighs> I, I done did a mighty thing. Oh, I'm tired now. Carry me away, type shit. Oh, that my part. bad, my bad, Quinn. I ain't mean. No, you're good. That's exactly what happened. So, like, I'm, I'm like, it's kind of like it, 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 it. You kind of like got it from that. Just like I don't want to like I post like let us go type deal. Like so, like nah, you just gonna have to take me now. So, so <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm like, man, like so I throw his arm around my shoulder, and I'm like. You know, they like stop, everybody lay down on the ground and and I'm next to them. That's insane. Yeah. Um wow. It's a, it's a nightmare, so, family. It was a so, uh, and that's not wow. everything, y'all. No, that's not. It's not because even while I was in there. Well, wait, 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 was, wait, wait. Because we want to add this too. We only got two minutes. Because that's not it. He don't get that much play. Um, he only getting this play. I'm talking about Jamal. He only getting this much play because um, of your testimony. Now, Quinn, what we're going to talk about soon or coming up is what was done. So since Quinn uh, was a part of that uh, false flag operation and he was not instructed to grab the flag, he did that all on his own. Um. Quinn reached out via his consort. We discussed. Um, I told him that he was going to have to train because he's not entitled to consular jurisdiction uh, after I found out that um, they never was prepped uh, uh, on the 101 questions for Moorish Americans, the Moorish literature, the uh, Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Civil of America. He didn't have no basic training. So he didn't know what he was looking at. 
he just thought that they were just exercising their right to travel, well, right to keep and bear arms and all of that, right? Just like any other new more coming into this movement would think, right? right? You call yourself a Morris American, you got your rights back. So anyway, told Quinn, um, you know, uh, what literature, literature to get sent in to him. He did it, his consort, sent all the literature in uh, from that website. And then um, we got the training. So here you'll see the affidavit of fact, Ridicole Warranto, that's certified, hand wrote by Quinn Kabir L. <laughs> Proud of you, silly, bro. bro. I know. I'm proud way. of you, bro. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Shit. Thank you. Because I ain't know nothing. Well, I can man. read it. I, I, and so I'm the, as of to this day, I'm the only more who, who enforces treaty rights to constant jurisdiction and, and dismiss the attorney from, the, from this, from this de facto. He's the only oh, active more in this Rise of the Moors case that doesn't have an attorney. He expressed his dissent right here on this affidavit. Amazing which is him rescinding his consent <clears throat> to with any attorney agreements that's certified. Here is the notice of withdrawal, which he was instructed oh. by Juju and Jamal or yeah. Juju through Jamal or Jamal through Juju to file all these motions. And he withdrew all of the motions. That's on this one. And this here is the default judgment that he hand wrote. And this is the writ of error that was issued July 20 by uh, our consular court now that he's entitled to consular jurisdiction because he demonstrated the principles. And last but not least, this is the writ of error that he himself typed up on his own. And it's certified and recorded on a public record and enforceable. And for everybody to go on this website, I'm encouraging everyone to go here, read his story, read the certified copies of the documents so you'll know why the case is going to be dismissed. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, for all the other Moorish Americans that are part of that, uh, that incident, um, because of Quinn's testimony, they now have a choice. <clears throat> Whereas though they didn't think they had a choice, and they were all instructed by Juju courtesy of the information that I received to get an attorney. And then once Quinn got out, told uh, Quinn to go, I'll say it, Quinn, you ain't got to say it. She told Quinn, hey, Quinn, you, I think you should get an attorney. I guess, I guess she heard that Quinn got rid of it. I guess, I think you should get an attorney, but don't tell anybody because I don't want anybody to think I'm an agent. It's word for word. Wow. Wow. All right. So we got to uh, shut down. All right, so um, that's all the time we have right now. Hey, Quinn, thank you, brother. We commend your courage. We appreciate your testimony.